walking around on Earth, you notice that it looks and feels flat. And this has led to millions around the globe to believe that the world is flat. The Flat Earthers movement is documented in the Netflix movie Behind the Curve. Sky is the limit. Probably literally. Ah, I see what you did there. Why is it expanding the way it is? Right. If you get online, you'll see so-called evidence that seems scientific, and you go, huh, maybe they're onto something there. They find this audience that taste them as gospel. I just want to feel comfortable in things that I believe. Mm. We're trying to get to the point where it's accepted. <laughs> it's today's conspiracy theory that we're tackling as part of our Conspiracy Week series. And we have people from both sides. We have flat earther Mark Sargent, who joins us live from Seattle, as well as our space expert, Brad E. Tucker. Nice to see you. Hey. Thank you. <laughs> Mark, let's go to you first. What exactly is the flat earth model? Sure. The Flat Earth model says that we are not living on this little blue globe flying through space at incredible velocities in an impossible universe. We are living on a stationary, flat, round disk that is covered by a dome. And it's despite what your model says there, it's not floating in space. It could be sitting anywhere. It could be sitting on my desk right now. There you and, go. And, Mark, when did you first come across the Flat Earth theory, or is it something you developed yourself? Uh, no, no, I didn't invent the flat earth theory by any stretch. Uh, I looked into it in 2014, and like most people in the flat earth theory, I tried to disprove it and thought I could shoot it down at a weekend. And nine months later, I created something called Flat Earth Clues, which was a series of videos that asked the internet hive mind, hey, tell me where I'm wrong. Tell me where I made a mistake here. And that was in the beginning of 2015. And four years later, we have conference. We've got nine conferences this year. We have a documentary, tons of podcasts, and we're growing like crazy. So actually, I just like to interrupt here. Like, one of the points here is that you're communicating to us via satellite and via a round globe, right? There is no <laughs> way for your signal to get here right now to our studio. <laughs> via a flat surface. Unless most of the communications are done with fiber optics in the water, which they are. Satellites, I, I, by the way, I don't say that I don't believe in satellites. I'm just saying that the NASA high altitude balloon program, which has been going on since the 1950s, can carry a lot more bandwidth and a lot more payload than rockets ever could. Ooh. That's right, and I work on that project, thank you. Uh, <laughs> and in fact, you know what, we actually had someone. So uh, Felix Baumgartner, he was this, uh, essentially NASA got a crazy Austrian to uh, jump from a large balloon. And one of the cool things in the video you see is he sees the curvature of the Earth from these high altitude balloons. Like, you can actually Does he? go... You can actually Does go he? on I, you right know, now. I, I, I sent a, a snapshot of the Felix Baumgartner jump, the, the Red Bull jump, and it's interesting because the curvature of the Earth from there, from 130,000 feet, is so severe that it means the entire world is about the size of Arizona. And so I also sent a video and the balloon thing, which you just saw. Look, we've got balloon footage at 120,000 feet, which is absolutely flat. So who's right? Felix Baumgartner, a severe curvature, or us? And it's not even us that send up the balloons. Well, it's actually, it's me, because I'll there, show you in a second. You I took a photo that's, that's the curvature where you can see the that's, curvature. And I think this is the cool thing. That's the curvature thing. right there. Sorry, roll, roll that back. That's the curvature of the Earth at 130,000 feet, right there. Yep. No, no, yep. not a chance. Mark, I've got to ask, have you ever reached the edge of the Earth if it is indeed flat? And is it a little bit like the Truman Show? Have we got sort of, you know, wooden sides to the Earth? I mean, what's there at the oh, edge yeah, of yeah. the what, Earth? What, what, what we're talking about here, no, we haven't reached it. Of course not. Antarctica is off limits to everybody but military and military scientists. Uh, uh, the edge of the Earth is far beyond our reach. Uh, being the Antarctic coastline is just the beginning of the edge. And we are talking about something with walls and a floor and a ceiling, very similar to The Truman Show, which is why I talked about in the documentary and I talked about in my clues, which says that, look, why couldn't it be something like The Truman Show? Uh, a planetarium, we can see all sorts of fun lights on the sky. Who's to say when you walk out of a planetarium, you're just not walking into a much bigger one? So who, who built the dome, do you think, Mark? Oh, that's a big question. You really want to give that to... Right, uh, I'd like to jump no, no, in, no, right? Take my take friends have been to Antarctica. First off, it definitely... <laughs> It definitely wasn't us. It wasn't human beings. Human right. beings had nothing to do with the construction of this place. At that point, you're really going off into one of two areas, which is, okay, an advanced civilization that's much older than ourselves and much more powerful, or the divine. And take your pick. Really, you're just splitting hairs because one man's advanced technology is another man's deity. 
And are we the only flat Earth or are there other flat planets out there with domes? Is the deity or other civilizations built other flat Earths? Flat no, that's an, that's an excellent question because first off, we would say that anything you see in the sky are just pretty, pretty lights. So Venus and Mars and Saturn and Jupiter and all those, I mean, they look spherical, but they're just part of a light show. But could there be other domes and other structures out there? Sure, why not? If, if I was more powerful enough to build this place, I wouldn't make it a one-off, not so, by any stretch. I'd make more than one of this. Sorry, Kate, Kate, I just want to do a thought experiment here. So I think we would probably agree that a good cover-up uh, would involve money, right? That someone sure. is paying to cover it up, right? Lots, lots of money, yes. Right. So then people would then profit from this cover-up, right? I think that's kind of... Uh, profit in a way, sure. Yeah, right. And then so we would say that NASA is complicit in this to some degree, uh, and well, so yes, they would be the beneficiaries that. of this. Right. Um, in, in this case, we're not covering up for profit. We're covering it up for power. So, yes, yeah, NASA money. would be built. And, and what, what I'm saying is the only reason NASA was even built, and by that we're talking about the United States military, NASA is absolutely Department of Defense. Uh, NASA's actually they civilian, are, by the way. You can get a job with NASA. Uh, you know no, that, right? no, no, I'm afraid not. NASA's I'm afraid so because I've worked Department for them. Defense. Look, Frank, like, they so no, I, no, can I just, I just want to finish my line of reasoning real quick. So then if, if there is money involved... And then people are yeah. paid for it. Now, if I am saying that the Earth is round, which I very much do because I've seen the photos and the moon and other things, then sure. where's my money? Because my 2008 Ford Focus and my mortgage would disagree that I'm profiting from this. He's even wearing thongs. Yeah, I can't no. even afford pants. <laughs> what, what you're saying is the cover-up would involve millions and millions of people, and I go the exact opposite. I'm saying compartmentalization need to know. This is one of those things where less is more. You would absolutely keep the fewest amount of people involved. 99% of all the people that are working at NASA don't know anything. They polish capsules and they build fuel systems and they build rockets. The only guys that need to know are the telemetry guys and those guys above them. Scientists, pilots, all the space agencies, except for the high, high brass, they don't need to know anything. But I, and by the way, I've NASA, made, not, NASA gets a budget of 52, what is it, $52 million a day? I think it was been up to $54 million a day. There's money to be had here, but it's not just about money. Well, but someone has to be making it. So, so I guess one of the points here is what I'm trying to make is that, mm -hmm. you know, we can always go back and forth. You cannot believe what I'm saying, and that's fine. That, that's not the point. Sure. What the point is, when we do in science, we create experiments that are reproducible. I can go out and tell anyone when a lunar eclipse is happening, and you can see that the moon is going to look curved. You can see that as the shadow passes over the moon, it is not flat. It's actually, there's an edge to it. I can say, you know what, for 500 bucks, you can buy an off-the-shelf balloon, a tank of helium, and attach an iPhone or a Google phone, but sometimes the Samsungs catch fire, um, ah, right. that you can see the curvature of your, for yourself. But you haven't given me an experiment that I can do to show what you're saying. Okay, let's start off real quick. I don't know how much time we have, but let's, let's run them down real quick. Long distance photography. That'd be the first one. It's the most obvious one that flat earthers jump yeah, we at, did, which we just is saw an image the curvature. Sorry, what? We just saw an image on screen that I took that shows it's, it's curved, but continue. Oh, got, got it. Uh, let's say the, uh, the curvature of the Earth is what mainstream says, which is eight inches per mile squared. That's not supposed to be daunting. It's eight inches per mile per mile, which means that three miles is three times three, which is nine is 72, and 10 times 10, it goes further and further toward 50 miles. You're talking about almost 1,700 feet of curvature. And that's you're looking forward and back. Don't, talk, don't look about left and right right now. Forward and back, which means that a boat should go over the curvature of the Earth. It goes behind the curve. It should be gone and gone forever. And yet, and I would have been totally with you there 10 years ago, but HD technology has changed that to where we can see objects way, way further. We can see objects over the hill. And don't start up with mirages because we can see these in all weather conditions, all light conditions, almost all uh, distance conditions. We can target them with beam radar. We can target them with infrared. And we can destroy them with military technology. I ha have experts that will testify this to this effect. We can do this all day long. That is a test you can absolutely do on the ground. You don't need space to do it. All right. Listen, that okay. listen we'll I'm, have I'm to convinced. leave that debate there. Uh, head to our Facebook page and vote again. Has this debate changed your mind on whether the Earth is flat or not? Uh, as well, do you believe in chemtrails? Well, oh. tomorrow we'll be mm -hmm. debunking the chemtrail conspiracy theory as part of our next segment on Conspiracy Week. Head to our Facebook page and take the poll to cast your vote. A huge thank you to both Mark and Brad for joining us today. Thank you. Thanks, I like being here in person. I appreciate it. And I say we take, we take Studio 10 on location. We'll launch a balloon and we'll go see the curvature for ourselves. Oh, that's a great idea. Yep.